Hello, welcome or welcome back to Hazel Jane Tarot and today we're going to have a chat about my September favourites and my August favourites from 2022. Sorry I haven't been around so much over the last month, I uploaded only one video um, in September uh, but we're going to have a wee chat now about some of the decks um, that were used and were new in the last couple of months and then we'll uh, chat about some other things, books and so on towards the end. So the Super Late Aris Tarot, you'll have heard me mention if you saw any of my videos from July. This is a deck I bought secondhand from Jackie Zivna, who's an Irish tarot reader and on YouTube as well. Um, and I really love this deck and I've been using it quite a lot. So I have been using it with reversals and I just, I love, look at those backs, they're lovely and the, the pig gilding is so pretty. So... I really enjoy the art in this deck. I love the vivid colours. I don't usually use it actually on this um, cloth. I usually just use it on the table, which is, you know, woody coloured. And that um, makes it slightly less, you know, it's a bit extra for the eyes against the colourful background. So what I tend to do when I'm shuffling with reversals is I'll have to reset the deck at the beginning of the reading. Um, and then I split the deck into three and I shuffle about a third of the deck as reversals. Um, but this deck, I think it's beautiful. It's contemporary. It's uh, really lovely to look at, um, really colourful. And the interpretations are Rider Waite Smith's based enough for me to be able to read it really easily and quickly. So I've been using this a lot and I have no real desire to switch out to using another deck. Um, but I've been especially enjoying reading with, uh, reading with this deck along with the Painted Runes. So the Painted Runes is a rune-based oracle deck by Sophie McKay-Knight. Sophie McKay-Knight is an independent artist based in Edinburgh in Scotland and she produces and sells her own decks independently. So I have the Painted Tarot which I love and um, I had posted a few videos about it and when the Painted Runes came out, Sophie approached me to see if I wanted a copy of the Painted Runes for review, um, which I was delighted to receive. And this is so far the only promotional deck I've ever received. <laughs> so thank you, Sophie, if you happen to stumble across this video. Um, but just full disclosure, I just wanted to mention that. Um, but I'm certainly under no obligation to continue to use or talk about it and I'm talking about it today because I really love the, the deck and enjoy working with it and it's nice that that has come up because that's one of the cards that came up for me during the course of the month so um, I've been using the Painted Runes together with the Super Lunaris Tarot in a kind of nine card box spread so I'm going to see if I can create a bit more space so you can see what that looks like so I'd pull a rune card in the middle and then I would shuffle my Super Lunaris and obviously more than that. And then I'd put the cards around it. Um, so these are obviously a lot of the cards that I was just looking at. Um, so your nine card spread. Now, I don't know if you use a nine card box spread already. Um, so the way I approach this, is this is a, a spread that I kind of started using when I studied with Tom Benjamin. I did an online um, tarot course with him and one of my my fellow students in the course, um, she also was a big fan of the, the nine card spread and privately had also explained how she used it. So we, So I've been using it a bit since then. The, in this case, though, by putting the oracle card in the middle, that becomes my main focus. And the this card, I, th I think the Painted Runes, because I'm not familiar with runes at all, I think the Painted Runes communicates um, the rune meaning very effectively, actually, because I look at that and straight away I'm thinking masculine energy um, and the image um, of the man there in, in the painting helps to bring that through as well. But then I would look it up in the Painted Runes little guide booklet, um, which is in full colour and really nice. So there, for, ex <coughs> for example, is the, the meaning for this one. So um, a spiritual warrior, 
of symbol painted onto weapons, masculine energy, an urge to compete, and so on. So gives a really useful sort of overall energy for the week ahead. Um, and to me, these rune meanings are, are very big um, and I wouldn't want to be pulling one every day, but for a week ahead, it, it feels like a good fit energetically. And then I would sort of look at the tarot spread around it to see how that all interacts. Um, and there's lots of different ways you can read a nine card box spread. Uh, I tend to read, as Leslie explained um, her approach to me, um, starting at the top as the past, like the, the top being the kind of where you're coming from and then flowing down into the bottom corner of sort of where you're going to. So in this case, we had the Knight of Wands as a sort of destination of the energy coming from the Ace of Cups up in the corner. And then you can sort of read it in columns, like read the three columns, um, read the past to the future. Um, that way too, you can also read... I like to read it that looking at the cards on either side of the room and looking at sort of what's pulling that energy back or holding it back and then what it's moving into. Um, you know, it's quite a flexible way of reading. You're maybe also looking at things like who is looking at what, like so the direction of gaze. Um, you know, for example, this guy is looking down towards this guy who is also looking backwards and this lady is also looking backwards and because this card's reversed he is looking backwards so I might be thinking that there's a lot of um a lot of energy that's maybe reluctant or looking to the past or you know not not sure of the direction to go in yet and you know when you look at this a knight of wands he is also kind of looking in that same direction um, and he's got loads and loads of energy but his horse isn't moving. So there's maybe like the sense of, um, you know, in, in this particular reading, I'm just seeing lots of stuff. Like we've got the seven and eight of pentacles, both in the same spread as well. So I'd be looking at that and, and seeing where they, they are relative to each other. So I feel like this, this spread is moving towards a kind of, um, more deliberate action, but there's lots of sort of stagnant energy around this masculine, energy that's right in the middle um this sort of drive to take action but maybe it's not very directed so anyway that for example is how I've been reading this type of spread um so I love this spread I think it's great I think it's really um really useful for a week ahead you get a lot out of it and the the painted runes and the super lunaris tarot work just really beautifully together so that has been my main reading I am not a person who pulls cards every day I'm certainly not at the minute um, and having that sort of focused weekly reading has been really useful. I have a little thermal photo printer which I've been using, a little black and white printer um, and printing the reading, taking a photo, printing the reading out and sticking it in a journal and then writing up what I think about it and doing that once a week is more than enough for me in terms of journaling about tarot readings. I've got too much other stuff to do. Um, other decks that I have used a little bit, um, towards the start of August, I was using the Victorian Romantic Tarot a little bit. This is a gorgeous deck um, that I got this year, um, having backed it last year. And it's lovely and it's mm, it smells really good, <laughs> the printed paper smell. Uh, but yeah, I just I used it a few times towards the start of the month, but then got into the Super Lunaris and have been mostly using it. Um, a few other things that I have been using a little bit. Um, I always use the Mother's Wisdom tar uh, Oracle every month and pull a card for the month. Sometimes I forget to pull a new card at the start of a new month, and that is the case at the start of September. So I had this Hummingbird card for the whole of August and September sitting out. Um, and this is a card to sort of make me think about, reflect about mothering. And this joy card has been really a nice message to keep referring back to. Uh, you might know that um, Leslie Odom Jr. is a great favourite of mine as a singer. And on his album, Mister, he has a song called Hummingbird, which I think is dedicated to his daughter. So, so every time I seen this card I had that song in my head through the whole of the last two months I also attempted I'd picked at the start of September the Awakened Soul Oracle by Ethany as a card as a deck to also use and maybe pull for daily cards um this is a lovely independently produced oracle deck and 
the cards are really large and they're nice to sit out on display on an easel and so on. To be honest, I loved it the first time I used it um, when I'd initially got it. This time, pulling cards from it, the keywords, which are very broad, um, what Lisa Papez might call expansive keywords. Uh, you know, I, I, I in the past, I found those really great, but this time I found them a bit, yeah, they just didn't speak to me so much. So it is a lovely um, deck, but I just wasn't connecting with it as much in September. So I used it a few times and then I just put it away again. So that's gone back on the shelves for a while. Um, absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's a lovely deck, just wasn't really resonating for me this, this time around. And then this deck, the Oracle of the Seven Energies, this was the deck I had in my bedroom for bedtime card pulls, which I actually didn't do all that consistently. Um, this is a deck I got in a trade. It's by Colette Baron reed and Jenna Della Grataglia. Um, I really enjoy the visuals of this. I think it's very pretty. And I quite like the slightly more... I can't think of the right word, like atmospheric keywords on this Oracle deck, like a burst of magic, sacred reverence, a spirit of gratitude, spoken mirrors. Um, I find when I pulled cards from this, sometimes they really resonated immediately. Um, sometimes though, I needed to read the entry in the guidebook and I find with Colette Baron Reed decks that the guidebook is really part of the experience to to use the guidebook as well so I didn't use do that consistently for the month but I did enjoy um I did enjoy looking at it so uh that was the oracle of the seven energy so that's all the decks that I've used over the last two months and <coughs> none of them were used that much apart from the super lunaris tarot um, and the painted runes which were used the most so new decks there were new decks. I really had decided I wasn't going to buy that many decks this year. That did not really happen. I have bought quite a few decks and I really am going to have to slow my roll or even have a proper no decks year, maybe next year, because I'm running out of space in my storage space that I have, my bookcases for the decks. And there's a lot of clutter in my quite small house. And I also, as you can see, I'm not using... I'm not one of these people who's using eight or 10 or 15 different decks in a month. I'm really only using one or two decks and I have more than enough now to use one or two decks a month for the rest of my life. <laughs> I don't need any more. Um, but these are the ones that I bought recently. Um, I actually have, you know, been watching a bit of Tarot Tube, watching um, Mixture Stray's videos about collectors versus colors and some of the responses to that. I was watching Becca's, um, Becca's home and tarot talking about getting rid of a lot of her collection and um, not wanting to buy any more and I wanted to do a proper response to those videos um, I am not planning to get rid of a whole lot of my collection but there are definitely some more I could move on and I'm realizing that at the moment the, the current phase I'm in I'm just not using a huge range of decks but anyway uh, the Goddess Dream Oracle by Wendy Andrew I bought in August when I was on holidays and I have this thing where I go to a shop that's like a metaphysical type shop and I feel like I just want to buy something that's always my excuse but I've this got to the stage recently where I've been buying things and just not using them in those shops so I'm going to have to restrain myself a bit more I had been thinking of getting the Goddess Dream Oracle for a long time because last year I got the Goddess um love oracle and I really loved it and I used it for months and months and months uh this one I haven't used yet I think I pulled it out and attempted a card pull from it one day and just wasn't feeling it and put it away um it's very similar to the goddess love oracle I know that uh Simon at the Hermes Cave has combined the two which is a really nice idea and I might actually even do that lots of these cards seem to depict a sort of Bridget Bridgeting type energy which is nice I did an unboxing of this, actually I filmed an unboxing, but I haven't uploaded it and I'm not going to. I don't think I had, I didn't add anything terribly interesting about the deck um, in the, you know, 25 minutes or whatever I was talking about the pictures as I looked through it. Um, I've actually, that's the third unboxing video that I filmed and not uploaded. And I have just sort of, 
I, do, I, I uploaded an unboxing of the ta Elder Stories Tarot, um, but some of these other decks, uh, I don't think the, the unboxing added all that much to the, the conversation around the deck. So anyway, the Goddess Dream, it's lovely. I haven't used it much yet. I will probably use it at some point. Um, but that's where we're at with that. So that was new in August and is relatively unused. Also new was the Elder Stories Tarot, which I have filmed a full unboxing of and I have uploaded. This is a fantastic and uh, exciting new deck by an independent creator. Now you can see it's still in order. So I have not used this yet either. I didn't quite I feel like I wanted to read with it because I was enjoying the Super Lunaris Tarot so much. But this is a fun, um, colourful, really unique vision um, of a tarot deck uh, and by an independent creator, came all the way from New Zealand and features only older people and I love it. I, I really, really do love it, but I, I just haven't used it yet. It hasn't, haven't had the right, hasn't been the right moment, but I will get around to using it at some point. And that's definitely not one I have any intention of ever moving on. Um, I have to get a nice bag. I think I might try to get another Kelly Bear pouch for this one because my other um, deck by Hand Me That Pencil is also in a Kelly Bear bag. So let's see if I can get one of those. I also bought, <laughs> you might laugh at me, I bought the Total Tarot magazine again because I sort of like the look of the Arcanum Tarot and that's about as far as that thought process went. I was buying groceries, the tarot, Total Tarot magazine was for sale, it was a rainy day, I wasn't in the best mood, I thought oh look the Arcanum Tarot, that looks all right. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway I bought then and two weeks later I went, went back to get the second one so I would have the, the two and I haven't opened it yet I'm sort of saving it for another rainy day when I feel like a little pick me up so uh, yeah there we go the Total Tarot magazine <laughs> sitting still in the plastic um, So, but that's another new deck that I've bought myself and um, is just sitting there waiting for me and one more new deck, also still in the plastic, is The Mystique of Magdalene Oracle by Cheryl Yambach Rose. When I found out that this was coming out this year, I was so super excited. Um, you know, I you might know I already have two decks by Cheryl Yambach Rose, Through the Eyes of the Soul, which I love. Um, and I also have the Transcendent Journeys Oracle, which I haven't used as much. I don't, don't resonate with quite as much. But I love her art style so much. And some of the Magdalene cards in those other decks were some of my favourites. So when I heard she was bringing out a Magdalene Oracle, of course, I had to get it. And I've been keeping an eye on pre-orders and, and so on on Amazon. And it, the release of it in the UK was really delayed. Um, compared to when I think it originally said it was going to come out. So anyway, as soon as I saw it was available, I ordered it and here it is. And I haven't opened it yet. I'm just saving it for, you know, when I've got the time to really enjoy it. So if you have bought, used, enjoyed, got rid of any of those decks, I will be keen to talk about it with you in the comments because that's one of the things I enjoy the most about these videos. So that's the tarot bit over. Um, some other things maybe to talk about. Some experiences this month. I went to see Beautiful, the Carol King musical at our local theatre. Um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, the staging was really creative and the actress who played Carol King, who is not the girl pictured here, was fantastic. Really fantastic. She elevated the whole thing. Um, her performance was was outstanding. Um, I also enjoyed another kind of a theatre performance um, at our local Irish Cultural Centre. Um, there's a, a writer called Mankin McGann who has a show called Aran August M, which means bread and butter. And it's a spoken word performance while he bakes sourdough bread um, and then he passes and, and churns butter. And <laughs> If it sounds like the most hipsterish thing, the most pretentious thing you've ever heard of, I thought that 
too, but actually it was really, I <laughs> really enjoyed the show. Um, he passes around a little hand churn and everybody has a go at churning the butter and then the butter is served along with the bread that he bakes during the show. But during the performance, he speaks both in Irish and in English about sort of words in the Irish language. Really enjoyable um, performance. Um, speaking of which, I have been continuing to study Irish and really have been very absorbed in that. And that has been taking up a lot of my free time. Um, continuing to study Irish and I've been listening a lot to the archive of a podcast called Mother Folklore which I will put the spelling of that in the in the comments below if you wanted to check it out but um, it's a podcast where they talk about words in Irish but the it's in English and they also explore sort of historical things about Ireland and mythological things and they talk about politics and lots of other stuff but kind of bringing it back to the prism of the Irish language um, continually. Um, I'm probably a bit maxed out with it at the minute because I've listened to a lot of episodes in a row. Um, but if you're interested in Ireland, um, Irish culture, Irish history, or that kind of thing, um, or the Irish language, if you've got a podcast app that you listen to, you know, and you can look up the archive, um, I would recommend to check it out. So um, Fuckle is... The Irish word for words right so that's where the what's where the pun comes in <laughs> with the title of the podcast anyway so you can check that out if uh, you're interested at all in Irish language and so on so books I actually didn't read as much in August and September as I had in earlier months and I've realized that if I want to hit my 45 book target for the year I'm going to have to make sure I finish three books a month for the next three months. I can't believe there's only three months of the year left. Um, one of the books I did read in August was this book about Lou um, by Morgan Dalmer. I didn't enjoy this in terms of like readability, wanting to come back to it as much as maybe I have some of Morgan Dalmer's other books like the one about Bridget. Um, but as an introduction to The God Lou, it's really um, well researched. Um, Morgan Dalmer's books I would recommend very highly, actually, if you're interested in understanding not not anybody's personal gnosis around the Irish gods, but actually what is in the myths, what is um, what is in the, the lore that exists. And uh, Morgan just goes into it in loads of detail. So this was a really good in introduction. So for the month of Lunasa, I wanted to read about Lou and this was, yeah, really good. For that so um that was Lou I also read a couple of what you could only describe as sort of I don't know patronizingly described as women's novels uh Ruth Jones is a writer who um you might be familiar with from the tv show Gavin and Stacey um she was one of the writers of that series so I read this one Never Greener um which is kind of about an extramarital affair and its impact on two couples and their friends and so on. Um, very readable. Like you could read it in a couple of days. Um, I also read a book by Beth O'Leary, who similarly sort of relationships, friendships, those kinds of subject matter. Um, a book called The Road Trip, which was enjoyable enough. Um, you know, not brilliant, but not bad either. Perfectly entertaining kind of book. So, um. But yeah, Ruth Jones this is my second book of hers that I read and I do enjoy her. She kind of, she writes from a sort of mature, mature person's point of view, like her characters have seen a lot and a lot has happened to them. And uh, so, yeah, if you enjoy that sort of thing um, or if you've read the books, I'd be keen to hear what you think. And I also listened to the audiobook of Persuasion by Jane Austen. I had started to watch the film on Netflix, which, oh my goodness, I did not enjoy it at all um, and had to turn off. <laughs> but uh, it made me curious to know a bit more about Persuasion. I watched a bunch of reviews on YouTube of the Netflix movie, which were more entertaining than the movie itself. And then I, I listened to the audiobook of Persuasion and very much enjoyed it. I had never I had never read Persuasion, so that was nice. And I also read this book of poetry. Now, I've been reading this for a number of months. Um so Ross Thompson is a Northern Irish based poet. There he is. And um, this book, uh, I just sort of worked through it slowly. Um, 
I didn't used to do this with poetry. Like I would have just read a, a couple of poems out of the book and then put it on the shelf with the intention of pulling it down and reading another random poem now and then out of it. But recently, in the last couple of years, I've tended to just read the book of poetry in its entirety before putting it away. And that has been a really nice um, experience, but it can take a few months to finish a book. Um, this This is great. I really enjoyed this book. And I'm going to finish off today with the poem threading the light that the the title a poem from this volume so he speaks about a number of different things in this um i don't know how autobiographical any of it is but he talks about the birth of a daughter and he talks about being a father he talks about grief and the loss of his mother um he talks about sort of other like kind of i don't know mythology folklore type things as well um it's a great book uh, but anyway, if you like poetry, I really would recommend checking checking them out. But this uh, poem is about childbirth. So just to give you a warning, um, if that's not something you want to hear about. Uh, but I will just finish off by reading this to you today. So Threading the Light by Ross Thompson. It took 36 hours to bring you home, though it may have been more and it may have been less. A day and a half in the eye of the storm of laughing gas and sheets scented with lemon zest. Something was wrong from the off. A lost wedding ring, a snippety shift nurse, several botched epidurals and an afternoon spent watching your stuttering heartbeat playing hopscotch on a fuzzy screen. I split my time between fetching naff sandwiches from the hospital canteen and telling your mum everything would be all right when all I wanted to do was thread first light into your eyes and slap first breath into your chest. But the timing was so tight and the space in the cleft so slight that I nearly forgot and I nearly lost faith. But nothing is ever truly lost. It is only misplaced. All right, thanks for coming back and listening today. And I hope to see you back here again soon. Slam.